Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Baring, naturopathic doctor, and today we're talking about supplements and really pay attention because I don't want you to take these supplement ingredients and I'm gonna tell you exactly what to look for in your vitamin and supplement labels. So according to labeling guidelines, and it really does depend on which country you're in, but those excipients and fillers need to be listed on the vitamin labels. And this is something to look for. It will say on that vitamin label, non-medicinal ingredients. And what this is meaning now, it's not just the efficacy of those raw materials which make up that vitamin or mineral. These are the extra things that the vitamin companies put into their vitamins and supplements. It could be in the herbal medicines as well, usually just to fill up capsules or to make the hard tablet forms. And they need these extra ingredients to sometimes make it look like there's more volume, more capsules per bottle. But in reality, you are now diluting the efficacy of those important nutrients that you're wanting to take for your health so that you feel better and you have to deal with all of these fillers. So I will definitely in other videos list them out for you, the exact fillers, what you're looking for, but it's unknown as to actually how much of each of these fillers is contained in each vitamin or mineral supplement. And that's because of the labeling guidelines. Yes, they are listed in descending order. So they go from the most used filler or extra ingredient to the least used, but as required by law, they don't need to say how much of each of these fillers is contained in the capsule. And the actual reality is, is that some supplement companies are using up to 85, 95% of these fillers just to fill up those capsules or to make those hard tablets. So this is something that I actually discovered on my own by doing the simple math and knowing approximately how many milligrams or microgram amounts of a raw material will go into a certain size capsule, I really started to look at the industry and looked at different formulations as to how much raw material, which is listed on the ingredient label, but not how much filler. So doing that math and estimating, you know, that high amount of those fillers, it is definitely common practice in most vitamin and supplement companies to be using this high percentage of fillers. So for you to sort of visualize this what goes if this were to be a capsule of course all we want is those raw materials so those raw materials should be what is filling up that capsule or you know most tablets unfortunately don't have the same scenario they need those binders and fillers to make that hard tablet so let's say this is a capsule those raw materials your vitamins your minerals the herbal medicines that's what should fill up your capsule now what most companies are doing is they're using these fillers and again cellulose microcrystal cellulose I have a whole list of what you're looking for in terms of those filler names in other videos so make sure you check those out but that's what they're using and this could be up to 85 95 percent of that filler to fill up that capsule so of course you're not going to get the same nutrient density of that supplement that you're taking when it is loaded with filler and that's diluting of course the efficacy of those raw materials and maybe this is why a lot of people don't experience you know the right types of reactions in my opinion from taking their vitamins and minerals or their herbal supplements they don't feel you know better necessarily and they don't feel better quickly because of all of this dilution because of all of those fillers so something that i want you to be aware of a lot of people simply don't know what happens in the vitamin industry and i think it's important that you know when you are choosing supplements to take for yourself that you're doing the best for your own body and choose Using the ones that don't have any of these fillers or these excipients. Now another factor is that these interactions may occur in terms of those fillers with those medicinal ingredients. So there's a question as to how much efficacy you know there really can be if these supplements are loaded with these fillers but more importantly with some of these flow agents they actually will coat and go on top of the raw materials meaning that there's less proper absorption 
absorption of those raw materials or those vitamins. And this, of course, would lead to less bioavailability. So something else to look for. Again, I'll go through all of the names of those different flow agents. One of them, a big one, is magnesium stearate. And I do a demonstration in another video, so make sure you check that out. Also, there is very limited research that actually determines the impact of these long-term use of these excipients in the vitamins and fillers on our overall health. And the truth is nobody's really going to spend the money on these fillers and flow agents because it saves the industry money in terms of putting them in the supplements in the first place. And that would definitely affect the bottom line. So it's something that I think it's important to know about. If you do have questions or comments, I would love to hear from you below. So please do put that in the comment section below. Also be sure to share this video. More people need to know about what happens in the vitamin industry. Also, I appreciate a big thumbs up. I hope that you learned something new. I'm sure you did. And if you're new to my channel, welcome in. Please subscribe. Click that bell to turn on all notifications so you always get my newest and latest uploads. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching today.